everybody. This is an informal intro to Edinburgh Dish because <laughs> Aaron and I are just having a blast over here. And I'm just going to kick it off with a visual demonstration of things you just can't explain about Windows. So um, this is a Surface Book 3. That's beside the point. But if you will notice where my icons are, <laughs> they, as Aaron described it, they're very European right now or, or British, if you want to call it that. And Aaron was just trying to replicate uh, my newfound success over here. And then mangled my own desktop. Yeah, and then he screwed up his own desktop. And so, Man. you know, this is just, it's just the theme of the month of the week, whatever the year <laughs> it is. Uh, it's beautiful in its simplicity and chaos. Is uh, It's funny. It is. But other, uh, you know, other icons, taskbars aside, Mr. Aaron, how is it going up in Seattle? So it's going all right. We finally got summer. Um, you know, we're, we're hunkered back down in major quarantine time and that's kind of rich, but you know, it's, it's, it's sort of just the game we're all playing now, but things yep. seem to be cooking, yep. you know, I don't know. How about, how about out there? It's kind of the same thing that, and probably much like yourself, the big variable we're waiting for now is school. We just, there's just. And nobody's going to, there's going to be no change into, we just don't know what's going on until probably, I honestly think like a week before school starts. And then there'll be like that definitive, like, Hey, kids are coming or, you know, get your laptops out. We're going to be logging in type scenario. And so we're all just hanging out. Like that's, that's really about it. Yeah. And I don't know uh, if you saw or if folks have heard, but I think Amazon just pushed back their Yes. Tentative return to office date as January, like January 8th, technically, which I think is like whatever the first Monday after mm -hmm. the new year or the Monday after the holiday. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I, unfortunately, I think that's just going to be how it is. Yeah. You know, I think this is our new normal and we're, it's going to be up and down until we really have the ball rolling on, you know, a vaccine or, or, mm -hmm. With any luck, a crazy mutation makes it go away. Yeah. And I'm not holding my breath for that. Yeah. So it'd be great if they could find out that like drinking craft beer is like the antidote. <laughs> like, because <laughs> let me tell you, man, I would be comfortably uh, immune at this point. <laughs> this entire country, I'll tell you. So there's a, uh, and, and I, I don't know, uh, you know, how much of our audience uh, is our beer drinkers, but the, uh, there's a great local brewery called Georgetown brewery mm -hmm. in Seattle, Washington beloved. And they have their kind of uh, flagship beer is Manny's pale ale. And it's mm -hmm. not one of these triple over hopped mm -hmm. in Imperial India to the moon things. It's just <laughs> a nice Northwest pale ale. Um, and, and it was only sold in kegs, like on draft, mm -hmm. you can generally only get it in bars unless you went to the brewery and bought a, you know, a keg of it or something. Well, they, of course, because there aren't bars open here, yeah, um, they did a special canning, and people mm -hmm. have been hoarding this stuff like by the case. Oh. People are just going crazy uh, for these things. So yes, I think that if if that was the case, uh, you know, if we could drink ourselves well with craft beer, I think that we would be miles ahead. <laughs> that would that would be the ultimate cure. It would be that would be the perfect way to end 2020. But I'm not uh, I'm not going to hold my breath for that one. Gosh, um, things that are slightly bit more on topic for uh, today is that Microsoft did announce Extreme Flow Guard, or what they're calling XFG, little X, big F, big G, and Kernel Data Protection are coming to Windows 10. These are the granular of granular features, uh, but they're security related. And considering all the issues we've pretty much had with Intel chips lately, uh, this is this is a welcome addition. Yeah, yeah. I mean, very, very nerdy. We're super in the deep end here of the geek zone. And um, but these are really cool hardware based security features. Mm -hmm. And we're going to see, I think, more and more of this over time and more of this flow into Windows. And it shows how closely Microsoft continues to coordinate and collaborate with Intel. Yep. You know, that and it's because uh, is it is it. Uh, it is uh, Extreme Flow Guard that is not really yet available. That's the toggleable Correct. right feature. Yeah, and so this is a feature that's built into the May update, right? Am I, am I remembering I this right? I believe so. Well, I, I I can't remember. Like this is so. I believe parts of it are starting to show up, and then I think if I, I might be wrong on this, but I believe Extreme Flow Guard might honestly be like a couple different things that actually make all up the functionality of it. Um, 
But this is one of those things like when people say, what makes Windows Windows to me? Like this is the type of stuff that you're not going to just find in your run of the mill application um, vendor stuff. Like this is extremely technical, extremely security related. And there are updates that are going to arrive. that are going to make Windows honestly just harden up a little bit. Yeah, I agree. And I think these are all good things. And I think that the more I, I think people can and should expect more of this kind of hardware-based mm -hmm. security to happen. And I think the more of it that happens is good for everybody. Yep. Um, you know, vulnerabilities withstanding, get it, that that wasn't a great thing. And um, But there are a lot of very smart people working to make the systems that we use better yep. every day. And this is a great example of where it all comes together. And I think mm -hmm. the more that gets driven into the to the device into the hardware the easier it's going to be to service that in software yep. and then the more of that we're going to see and so there there are a lot of ins and outs here there's more i need to learn but yes these are very very cool things uh in terms of of what it offers and what the implications are for users the other thing is the um with, with and not, not to switch gears too abruptly here but the kernel data protection bit with the whole virtualization based security, mm -hmm. not as super bleeding edge, but another perfect example of this, you know, hardware based security feature yep. that then gets embodied in software, you know, to the benefit of everyone, all of us who, who use this stuff every day. Yeah. Right. So for IT people who are trying to do this and then you've got, you know, the, the application developers who are going to be able to, to use this from, from the windows frame rather than yep. having to go, uh, to the hardware, which hopefully will make it easier. Um, I don't know. It's I think it, the implications generally are good. Yeah, it's hard to look at this and be like, eh, whatever. Uh, but this is this is pretty legit stuff. But something mm -hmm. you can almost, I guess, depending on your laptop, could quite literally touch is uh, Microsoft did announce it was a couple weeks ago that they're modifying the start menu just ever so slightly. But I'm curious, um, Aaron, if you'll think this is the like bigger changes to come. But realistically, what they did was they removed the background color from live tiles. So it's more of like an icon than a, than a tile sort of thing. Uh, but it's a visual update. People seem to like it. And then they also announced a new settings icon, um, you know, this is definitely like on the extreme other end of kernel data protection, but these are things that people look at. And I'm curious if this is just like the kind of like the, the start of many more changes to come. I think it could be. I mean, I think what's entertaining about it. Well, first of all, when you held up your computer and said, check this out, I thought that's what you're going to show me. Oh. And there was some great dazzle <laughs> that was about to happen. And, and it unfortunately wasn't a more of a negative surprise, but, um, the uh, the thing that that struck me is it really looks almost like a a, a, a nod to uh, the Windows Vista Arrow. Remember that kind oh, of yes. theme? Yep, has a little bit of that feel and flavor to it, which mm -hmm. I which I kind of like, honestly, personally. Yeah. Um, but I think you know there, there are a couple other uh, kind of usability changes that go along with that. The changes to Alt Tab are kind of interesting. Yes. I don't know if you, you keyed into that, but that. That whole thing where Alt Tab is going to now move you between your browser windows in mm -hmm. addition to your applications, which for me, who's addicted to using Alt Tab, and I'm sure yep. I know tons of IT people live and die by this too. Like it is yep. just the way to move fast. Um, that that actually is a positive. That wouldn't be a negative thing for me because I do it kind of anyway, thinking oh, that, that yep. I'm moving between my Explorer windows or my my Chrome windows. Um, so there's a handful of those things that are actually kind of kind of fun and interesting, and I could see getting good and favorable traction. Um, mm -hmm. And to that end, to your to your question, answer your question, more to come, probably, probably. I don't I don't think there'll be earth shattering things, not unlike this, where this is not changing anybody's tune or, or going to make you you know think about quitting Windows or something like that, <laughs> or or make you a Windows fan after kind of being a reluctant Windows user because you prefer Mac or something. But, you know, it's, you know, refinements and they'll, they'll mm -hmm. keep trickling in and, you know, maybe we'll see some things that are a little more shattering than others. You know, it'd be nice if yep. some of this descended down into and we, we saw a little indication of this, too, into like, uh, you know, uh, PowerShell windows and things yes. like, that. Yep. you know, I mean, flavor that up a little more, give us a little more control there, make it as every bit as, as fluid um, as navigating around the desktop. That'd be kind of nice. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, something to keep an eye on. One thing I'll be curious to see if they do change, uh, and now that I've thought about it, the more and more I want it to happen, I'll be curious to see if they get rid of the Windows 8 styled start button. Uh, that has been, 
it's it's not a design that they use anymore. It's an outdated sort of look, and uh, yes. I'd love it if they updated that. Well, and I, and I was thinking about this too that I I don't really use the start button, start menu. Yeah, I don't either. At really, all. not the way I used to for the last long time, like 10, 15 years. Right now, I I'll hit the Windows key and just start typing the app name yep. and just hit enter. I don't even finish typing it. I know it's going to resolve after three key pushes, and I just go like mm -hmm. it's almost like the Alt Tab kind of thing. It's like a shortcut, and that's how I open apps and and move between um, different environments now. So I I'm with you there. I could see that either completely going away or having a completely different incarnation. Mm -hmm. I think this will also be something that'll turn windows users and the haters on their ears and 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 have a big blow up and blow back and all this stuff so i could see it being one of these things where it comes out in preview and they experiment yep. around and um you know it's almost like um almost reminds me of the Detroit, places like the Detroit auto show where they have the concept car and the concept car becomes sort of this uh discussion point Mm -hmm. Right. Almost like a like a like a usability test in a way or a, a, like a, a, a um, yeah, I don't know, like a like a like a taste test to see yep. what people are willing to digest or not. Mm -hmm. And so things are going to things are going to change, I think. Yeah. One thing that hasn't changed in in 17 years, <laughs> 17 years. It's crazy that it lasted for so long, but that's the nature of a bug is that there's a DNS bug with a, specifically on the server side uh, that Microsoft is saying wormable and just kind of makes you wonder how long that has been exploited over the past 17 years, uh, got patched with this last release. So, you know, obviously do your testing. I know we talk a lot about patches here, but that one seems to be pretty critical and, and worth poking at. Sure. And, you know, I think some of these are, more obscure, yes, wormable, but takes a very specific set of mm -hmm. circumstances to be wormable. And therefore, all of the worming would then have to rely on other environments that are also configured similarly. I'm not, I'm not sure about the details on this one, but in a lot of cases, that's how this goes, which is why it could kind of linger out there this long yep. and not really be that big of an issue. Um, and it also may not have been one that was really able to be wormed for other technical reasons, whether it's like, you know, processing power sure. or, you know, some other exploits, complementary exploits that were required or something like that, or, um, you know, a hack of some, mm -hmm. uh, encryption key or something crazy like that or, or whatever. Um, so yeah, there, these are out there. What's, what's every bit as interesting to me is that this month's set of patches is the fifth consecutive month with over 110 CVEs. Oh, wow. I didn't even right? realize I that. I mean, so, so it's sort of a crazy, um, right. So the co common vulnerabilities and exposures mm -hmm. is what CVE stands for, but you know, that's a pretty big number there's more surface, no pun intended, that, that we're addressing <laughs> with with these patches, mm -hmm. right? Um, there are more, you know, Microsoft 365 apps, what we saw yeah. 65 apps that, you know, so there's 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 sort of more going on that we're trying to address, the the royal we, we as IT people, we as as Microsoft at large. Um but that's still a ton, isn't it, man? It is. So I, I'm wondering if there's any relation to the remote work that is now taking place and this massive bump in the number of patches that we're seeing. I, Microsoft probably won't ever confirm it or they won't do it until after the fact. But I'm curious if for somehow they're tied in, like people working remote are finding more things and that's kind of explode, you know, exposing that. And that's why we're getting so many patches. We probably won't find out for a while, but curious if there's any relation. There. Yeah, that's that's an interesting consideration that sort of the use style is having a bearing on, you know, exposing more, you know, vulnerabilities mm -hmm. or giving us insight into things that weren't, you know, particularly visible when everyone was sitting inside a firewall. Yep. Um, that that's a that's a very interesting consideration. But five months. I don't know, man. Yeah, that, that's a lot. Yeah, it's a, a lot little, of months with that many. Unnerving, but anyway, yeah, good progress. I mean, I think there 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 definitely is a lot of energy being put into this. And again, I think what this what what the XFG, the KDP, the 
the patch discussion, all of this, the DNS uh, wormable um, discussion all revolves around just the criticality of security, Mm -hmm. right? I mean, so for so long it was privacy. I mean, and these are kind of, they go arm in arm, but it, it does seem like we're at another inflection point where this isn't just a thing you pay attention to. And, you know, for most of us, we've never forgotten about the importance of this, but it just seems like there's even more energy being directed to this. And it also seems like there's more coming at us mm-hmm. uh, in terms of, you know, people and, and uh, you know, spear phishing attacks and all kinds of crazy things going on. So, yep. Speaking of other somewhat crazy things, Microsoft made an interesting choice with the 2004 update or spring 20 H1 or spring May update or Windows 10 May uh, 2020 update, whatever you want to call it today. Uh, They made a a decision which they they are claiming is, and to quote, to prevent confusion, where previously you could manually defer updates for 365 days by going to Windows Update Settings and Advanced Options. So you're already kind of down in the weeds to get to this option, to defer it on the particular device and Microsoft said "Ah, that's too confusing so they just nuked the feature from the end user experience and now you've got to create a group policy uh, if you want to do this I I don't understand this one yeah so I feel like we just talked about this whole deferral Mm -hmm. right that this this deferral capability and that's nice right I mean okay well we we don't want to do this and a great example is um, yesterday literally yesterday and i realized that this uh will will go live at at a future date but recent enough that when you installed the july patches for many of us um outlook crashed and wouldn't restart Mm -hmm. Um, and and there was a lot of discussion that it wasn't related to the patches well it affected a ton of our people I didn't install the patch and it didn't affect me. So at least there's a little bit of anecdotal insight saying, well, at least it has some passing uh, relation to to the July patches. So, yeah, all all of this uh, points to the fact that we might want to um, take our time when when doing this. Is group policy a bad way to do it? No, it's a fine way. It's just sort of puzzling to me that we went to this, yes, defer it, and now no, manage it through the central old way. That's generally a better way anyway. You know, and I don't know if this decision was made because of feedback that way, that someone came along and said, yeah, well, really, you should just be doing this through group policy anyway. But wasn't that how we were doing it before anyway? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't, I don't know. This, this is a, this is a head scratcher for me, Brad. I don't know. The only, the only thing that I can think of, and this is the only thing, and this doesn't make it right what Microsoft did. The only thing I can think of is that when people were manually doing that, maybe it was breaking something on the back end that we just don't have privilege to know about. And Microsoft said, you know what? That's too much work to fix it. Screw it. Tell them to create a group policy and we're moving on. Yeah, I could, I could see that. And I could also see this notion of preventing confusion, which is like a funny, weird statement to make. But if you have a team and, you, you know, I mean, hopefully you'd have some kind of written policy that says, hey, mm-hmm. here's how we defer these and we do it this way. But I could I could see there being, oh, well, we, we deferred it out this long through the advanced options. And we also set this group policy that does it this other way. And now no one's getting updated. Now what do we do? And now we're exposed to this or, um, you know, I, I could see the potential risk of conflict and that, you know, it, oddly enough, group policy is one of those services that has fully stood the test of time, right? I mean, it's a very well conceived and universally adopted and very nice uh, consistent way to manage things. And so that's, you know, it's a good place for it. It just sort of is a weird, you know, yeah. long, long route they took to get back to where they are. Yeah. It, it's, it's a choice that they made and we just got to live with, um, I don't know if consequences is the right word, but you know, that's, that's the world we're in. So that there's nothing we can do. So. Yeah. And it's not the end of the world, even, even for, you know, in the trenches, it people, it's just mm-hmm. an adjustment you make and you just do it and you don't worry about, you know, the update, it's sort of like thinking about Silverlight. Oh, everyone got excited about Silverlight. No, no, no more Silverlight. Well, Silverlight. sure sucked. Right. Oh. But, and now it's gone. Well, if you would have woken up and if I would have woken up and plays bets on a, on a board and says, what are you going to talk about today? Silverlight would have been the thousand to one odds. <laughs> I pulled that one out. Silverlight. 
Oh, oh okay. just one of those, you know, one of those throwaway items, right? This is this this advanced <laughs> option is one of those just. just yeah, it's just so like you know, it's it's whatever. Oh, not not quite as not quite as uh, much of a platform as Silver Light was intended to be, but anyway. Oh, that's oh. amazing, Aaron. Never change. Mm-hmm. Never change. <laughs> <laughs> so, what else is going on in your world, man? How's smart to play up in Seattle? Weather's doing well. We're we're hanging out. What else is going yeah. on? Yeah, you know, business is going okay, and Good. and I know that that's not true for many many mm-hmm. people and many many businesses. And I suspect that a lot of our listeners are, you know, in a very different place and and really trying to figure out what's coming at them and how they're going to adjust. Whether you're in you know retail or hospitality or healthcare or any of these yep. other things, education like we talked about earlier. Anyone working in those environments is dealing with a crazy set of circumstances. And so many of those very people um, are working with us and our teams to take a look at what we've got and get things going. And I think part of it is that indeed, you know, the the work at home, uh, work remote thing is, is becoming more permanent than maybe we thought initially and in that the... Mm-hmm energy we need to expend to support people and make this sustainable is, is kind of a more, a more serious endeavor, which I, I think I, re, for sure I respect. Yep. That's why we made it. Um, but it, it, it just adds up to, um, you know, a great relief for us, but also a concern for, uh, you know, I guess the broader market and all of the yep. people in this industry as to how we navigate, um, the coming months and, and what we, what we do, you know, I mean, is, and so we're asking all these mm-hmm. questions about, okay, are we going to swing back? And everyone's going to be so great to, grateful to get back to work once, you know, kind of the dust settles from all this, yep. that, you know, work from home is n- not, not only not desired and not encouraged, like n- nobody simply wants to do it. Like yeah. people would much rather get together and be around each other or, are people going to realize from a business perspective, there's some value and some economy in this and that yeah. it's really easy through cloud services to make remote work possible. And we can manage people very effectively to other metrics and make sure that everyone's getting their work done and have mm-hmm. this not be an issue. Right. So we're, we're thinking about this in a lot of different ways. And again, just super grateful that we're, we're, I, I guess, lucky to be one of those solutions that, that facilitates work mm-hmm. from home and then as a result um are are, are seeing business continue uh, to go re- relatively okay um okay. but but it but yeah it's it's un, it's unnerving to think about you know mm-hmm. what's going to happen in the next four six months as we now i mean we're almost heading into fall now and here comes cold season and yep all the other questions so yeah. right now it's easy to be outside for the most part sometimes <laughs> it's swelteringly hot um, but that's where that craft beer comes in, uh, exactly. but to, to bring it full circle. But yes, once we're all confined again, it's, there's, it, it's an interesting world that we're heading towards, I think is probably the most appropriate and politically correct way to, to describe it. And I think the biggest challenge, at least from like my perspective and just like a, a planning perspective is we just, you know, everybody gets into routines, right? It's okay. Mid August school starts, we you know, and all this, like in all plans are now just tossed into the shredder and we're all just sitting here kind of waiting. Yeah, and so we're we're thinking about it in the context of temporary versus permanent change. Yeah, and 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 sometimes I guess, and maybe this is part of um, you know, kind of go back to the smart deploy discussion of, you know, it's it's a it's a quick change that could be a permanent change as well, right? Yeah. So, and I think there are a lot of those kinds of services and tools and solutions out there mm-hmm. that'll become that way, right? Even just at an IT policy level, supporting more workers remotely and not requiring, you know, to get devices and how you even get new employees up and running with, the, you know, no direct human touch. Yeah. And, you know, we're, we're in a position where we've made a handful of hires during this time and we ha- have never seen these people in person, mm-hmm. not once. Right. I mean, we have never Crazy. said hello to their face. Yeah. We've never, you know, handed their device. We've never shared like screen side by side. It's a very strange experience. So hopefully mm. that's not a permanent thing. But yeah. our ability to support users remotely end to end is much more so. And we're seeing people inquire about that. We're seeing people in desperation make rapid adoption of our product as they try to, you know, ne- out of necessity, do these mm-hmm. things. Okay, we've got a we've got a, a window to do a bunch of work. Our old system, 
although we tested it is not working at the scale we're doing it, what are we going to do? And we get these kind of uh, 911 uh, help calls over the weekend that, you know, we, we reflect on sort of what and why and, and, and how we can help people get ahead of that, really. I yep. mean, that's that's the awareness piece. But yeah, it's interesting to bring up the weekends because one of my it's I shouldn't say favorite because these people are probably having a bad day. But when I look at, you know, what popular pages were on Petri over the weekend and when you see you know, a hundred people hitting how to recover X item from deletion or corruption. It, it's that nine one one scenario. Now I don't have a physical connection to him, but I'm like that person's. It, yeah, they were there at like Saturday at two a.m. Yeah, you know, let's hope they're let's hope they're doing all right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so it's it is interesting to see people come in to our ecosystem who we have never met before we don't know them at all and no record of them prior to you know mm -hmm. a saturday afternoon and on sunday they're saying you know we need 500 and, it, it, and it's just interesting or or they're already a couple hundred in and saying hey why don't why why, why did the trial stop working <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's that's an interesting so, discussion i'm sure yeah, <laughs> that, exactly. that's great but i mean too. i mean and those yeah. are those are really great examples and great people who we want to you know they've been super successful super fast and we want you know we're not yes. we're, we're we're all about getting out of their way and making sure they got what they need so it's those are fun ones actually but well, well this was probably not fun situations for them i mean those are the worst but Glad, glad it works out for him. So I think if we were, were grading this podcast episode on a metric, at least from a personal perspective, laughs per minute um, is probably <laughs> at, at its peak for this yes. episode. It started off with a bang. We talked about Silverlight. We talked about a lot of other stuff, Aaron. We very much appreciate you taking time out of your busy day. Pleasure as always. And everybody else, if you have questions about Smart Deploy, make sure to click those links down below. I know a couple of you have actually, uh, I've recommended them, uh, well, you guys, Aaron, uh, to Smart Deploy and all that good stuff. So keep checking them out. Obviously, they're doing great stuff, and we'll catch all of you right back here next time.